Hi, this is Gwen Pearson. I am a certified uh, health coach and I am doing this a little different. I've never done a live before, but I thought I would give it a whirl and see how it works. Now, this is a video that um, is a little bit different content than I normally do because I've hesitated creating this video. Um, because it's something I talk about with my clients behind the scenes, but I know that a lot of newer coaches might question this suggestion that maybe don't quite understand um, the balance of maintenance. So what I find with some of my clients, and sometimes me too, depending on when life is happening, is I do really well on the five and one, and I'll easily lose 10 pounds a month until I don't. And then life happens, things get a little crazy. And then the next thing you know, I'm like not eating great. I always focus on my protein. I always focus on my water for the most part, but these funky carbs get thrown in the mix. I, it, if anybody out there is, um, you know, listening and, and understands what I'm saying, definitely throw a comment in this. So what I find with my clients is it's like this and some people will teeter and they'll do they'll go off plan for like half a day or a day or even a weekend and they resume right back on plan. And then other people more similar to me, it's like this massive pendulum that's like I'm on plan really well and then I'm not on plan really well. And it just swings and swings. And the problem is when you do that over and over, it's messing with your metabolism. It's messing with your brain. And you like when you're in that swing of doing well, you pull weight off, but then I don't know if I need to get my hormones checked. I know this is gonna resonate with a lot of you, but I swear to you, I put a carb in my mouth and I gain five pounds that's unbalanced because my body just loves carbohydrates. So what happens is when I go a little off, my scale immediately reflects it. And so this pendulum is shifting in like this 10 pound range of good, gain, good gain. And so it just messes with the brain. And then you're like, I want bread. I want carbs. I want whatever. And I had another health coach who does a lot of, um, coaching, um, on the mental aspect of it. We were talking about this the other day because I have so many clients that would love to just plow through, get the weight off, but they have a lot of emotional dialogue from things in their past that makes them make unhealthy choices because it's emotional for them. And so she asked me a question that I've never thought about. She said, are you more focused on bread or sweets in carbs? And I realized, or I thought I wanted sweets. I, I'm, I go off plan quicker with at a bridal shower with, you know, lemon bars. And I don't even love lemon bars. I like brownies and things like that. But then she said, but what if, if we take our brain out of that five and five and one pendulum for a second and start thinking breads and sweets, right? Sherry crying out loud. Oh, bread pudding. Kill me now. Right. You don't go to a bar because I always have that bread pudding. Um, so Sherry, by the way, I'm going to be commenting on people's comments because Sherry just commented that she loves bread, sweets, and bread pudding. So here's the thing that I realized is if we get out of our five in one window for a minute and talk about, let's say, a Weight Watchers scenario, we normally are given around 11 or 1200 calories and we do lose weight. It's just painfully slow. But on the five in one, it's super fast. But the problem is if we're yo yoing on the five in one, we're not making headway. We would have been better off on the slow, painful weight loss of Weight Watchers eating a Twinkie for four points, right? So basically, the thing about this, and this, Sherry, this will be a good thing for you to understand, is in maintenance, if you're in your maintenance space, you are learning two things, four things, two things. Number one, you're not ever going to put a carbohydrate in your mouth without pairing it with a protein. OK, because now that allows that carb never to spike your blood sugar. And if you do that every three hours, when you hit your goal weight, you don't gain your weight back unless that carb you choose is a Twinkie every three hours. And so mathematically, what maintenance will teach you and my coach 
way long ago made this really cool video that shows how this maintenance stuff works. It's not a video that the company uses, but I'll put in the comments below this video that she teaches people this maintenance balance. But mathematically, let's say I wanted a Twinkie every three hours. And a Twinkie is 220 calories. I think it's 23 carbs and only like two grams of fat. So it's, um, you know, relative. But the problem is that 220 calorie Twinkie has to be paired because it's 23 carbs with at least 23 grams of protein. Are you following the math of this? So equal carbs, you would prefer a little more protein than carbs. So let's say we're going to do the Twinkie for 22 or 23 carbs and 25 protein. The only drawback of that is now the caloric intake of that balanced fueling is about 400 calories. If I do that every three hours, 40 high, one of my kids has seen me live. <laughs> so if I go and have 400 calories every three hours, six times a day, holy cow, I'm in a weight gain mode, even though it was balanced, because I just ingested 2,400 calories in that day, right? So does this make sense how, yes, you first, a number one goal is you always pair that carb with that protein, but it's still at the end of the day, comes due, calories in, calories out, right? Anyone have any questions about that before I move on to the next section of what I'm kind of explaining about that? So yeah, could I have a Twinkie every three hours and balance it? I could, but I'd be gaining weight because my caloric intake is way above my natural expenditure of what I burn. So we know that most people shoot for around 1,000 to 1,200 calories if they're losing weight in a normal weight loss scenario, not encompassing a five-in-one weight loss phase. So basically, one of the things that I've been talking to my clients about, hey, Shawnee, talk, this will be good for you to hear what I'm talking about, about this maintenance phase and if you're penduling them on the five and one. So when I talk to my coach about this little pendulum that I end up being in, my thing that happens is she said, well, what do you actually miss? And I don't really miss the brownies and the cookies. I mean, I will eat those if I'm out and about as a trigger, but it's not that I, I don't miss those things. I actually miss normal oatmeal with brown sugar. That's a weird thing that I miss. I don't know why, um, not the instant Quaker, but like a legitimate yummy steel cut oats with brown sugar, right? And I do miss fruit in, in um, segmented areas. So again, do not watch this video and tell your coach that Gwen, the health coach that you follow on YouTube, said you could eat fruit. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is on the five and one, you will lose 10 to 12 pounds a month if you do it 100%. But if you're yo-yoing on and off, you're probably not even losing two to four pounds a month. If that's you, you are who I'm speaking to, not the person doing awesome on the five and one and thinks I'm just going to throw fruit in. So to make it make sense on the five and one, you're going between, depending on your lean, green and healthy fat around between 850 and maybe a thousand calories six times a day, right? Five, one. But for me, I find that when I'm in that space of the five and one, it's so restrictive that I yo-yo off at a bigger yo-yo. So something my coach and I were talking about is, again, the oatmeal. This is what I had to do. And this is where it's now going to take work. If you're listening to what I'm saying, you have to use my fitness pal to understand the math of this. So when I looked at me wanting to have oatmeal, but still trying to lose weight, I know my maximum calories I can eat is 1200 a day right? That's step number one in my fitness pal, which is what you do in maintenance. You figure out your barrier of what your caloric intake is. Now, knowing that, let's say I decide I want to have that oatmeal. So I did the math of this all on Monday. If I want a half a cup of oatmeal, the brand that I have, it's like an organic still cuts oats. It's like, I don't know, 30 something carbs. 
And that doesn't give me any wiggle room for my brown sugar. So what I figured out was if I do a quarter cup of that oatmeal, and I'm actually going to bring it up because I put it, I just kind of jotted this down for my brain to have the math of it. Um, so basically the oatmeal that I've chosen, and sorry that I'm dragging this a little longer. So stick with me if you want to learn what I'm talking about. My quarter cup of whole foods, 365 organic quarter cup of oatmeal is, hold on to your tail here. It is, um, where did it go? Okay, shoot, I don't have it right here. Um, 25, 27. So it's 13 and a half carbs, okay? And then I'm adding my two teaspoons of brown sugar. So now what I know is I have to have at least 25 grams of protein to counteract those carbs in the oatmeal and the, um, and the brown sugar. So that means I get to have one cup of egg beaters that is, um, that is 25 protein. Uh, okay. Got it. Yeah. 25 protein and five carbs. So mathematically, my, and again, this is why my fitness pal will break it down to you and give you the kick out ratio and the numbers at the end is that my quarter cup oatmeal, two teaspoons of brown sugar, and one cup of egg beaters is 27.5 protein and 26.5 carbs, right? And that's 230 calories. We know a normal fueling on the five and one is 110 calories. So this gives me an extra 130 calories on the day. So if I was going to do four of our fuelings, my oatmeal concoction and the five and the lean and green, now I've increased my caloric intake by 130 calories. Sorry, somebody's pulling up my dog's barking. But the problem with this is you are not going to stay in fat burn throwing something like this in. Okay. So my point is though, if you're like me, that you feel like having a little wiggle room where your caloric intake stays below 1200, but you're adding extra carbs and extra protein, are you going to stay in fat burn? No. Are you going to lose weight? Yes. But the chances are I may only lose six pounds a month knowing that I'm throwing a maintenance out of the grocery store fueling into my day. Anybody watching have any questions about that? Because if you throw in an unbalanced carb, or I mean, if you throw in extra carbs because our fuelings have about 14 carbs and this oatmeal concoction is giving me 26 carbs, I am above enough carbs where I am not going to be in a fat burning state. I am in a blood sugar balanced state, but my carbs are higher than staying in a fat burning state. So exactly, Sherry, you're right. If this is not for you, it's not for you. But my clients that are swinging in a big pendulum, I'm teaching them to go through the transition and maintenance information so they figure out if they're that person. Like I had another another morning where I went out to breakfast and I had a huge it Sherry, you're right. It's too many carbs and or too many, too much math. But the people that are penduling them and not even losing weight because they're going for the bread or going through things, they need an alternate option because they're not they're they're not gaining any progress. And so ultimately. My point of this is for me, I had a big egg white omelet the other day. And because I knew the math of how many, um, how many eggs were in that omelet, I immediately, even though I was at a restaurant, cause I asked the waitress how many eggs were in there. I plugged it into my fitness pal and I figured out how many, how much protein was in that egg. And then I know most slices of bread are 25 carbs. Interestingly enough, this omelet was massive. So it had about 40 grams of protein. So I knew, again, keeping in balance, I could have one piece of bread because bread averages about 25 carbs against my 40 omelet. But is that 25 carbs going to throw me out of fat burn? It totally will. But at least I'm balancing it 
keeping myself under 1200 calories. And I didn't, it didn't cause me to binge. It was a mathematical choice. And I resumed as normal on the day. So I guess my point of this video is again, don't go to your coach saying Gwen said I could go make a, uh, uh, what, what would it be? A, a blueberry protein shake with optimal nutrition vanilla protein powder that has 27 protein and then one or half a cup of, of blueberries is 24 carbs. So the 24 carbs against the 27 protein that I got at Costco, that is balanced. Yes. But those carbs are going to throw you out of fat burn. But if you're that person that strolly totally met is messing with binging on fruit or or um, bread or things like that, if you figure out how that would count in your caloric intake at 1200, you maybe eat like that, eat one thing like that once a day through your weight loss phase. And at least you're only losing six pounds a month instead of zero because you're yo-yoing at such a big pendulum. So um, Sean's asking, how many egg whites can we have a day if we wanted to do that? Well, it's not about per day. It's about what you're choosing as that carb, which is what maintenance teaches you. So if I wanted a piece of um, whole wheat toast, my daughter has this really great bread. I was looking at it yesterday and it has 15 carbs. If I wanted to have that in place of a fueling, which will throw me out of fat burn, but if I'm going to go out of fat burn, it's easier to just still keep staying balanced in a caloric window that will keep me losing weight versus one piece of bread turns into a peanut butter sandwich with jelly and then maybe a bowl of lucky charms after like does anybody understand that cuckoo mind of that so if you choose that piece of 15 carb bread you would need a minimum of 15 grams of protein and one egg white is 6 grams of protein so that so basically you would need three egg whites to counteract that one piece of bread. Again, you're not in fat burn, but if you only do one fueling like this a day, it'll keep you under that 1200 caloric intake and you'll still lose weight just like you would be with Weight Watchers, but it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier than Weight Watchers. It's going to be as slow as Weight Watchers, but at least you're balancing your blood sugar every three hours to give your thyroid, your adrenals, and your um, and your metabolism the ability to stay revving correctly. Because when you're penduling them, you're messing up all those internal organs that are trying to help you lose weight. So I, I know that this is not five and one approved because it's not. You will not lose weight at the normal range, but I'm finding that my clients that are really struggling in that pendulum, if I offer the option to kind of do a maintenance phase of 1200 calories a day and one fueling a day, aside from the four and the lean and green is this fueling they do out of the grocery store with a quarter cup of berries with a protein powder or a 15 gram piece of bread with some egg whites. Now they're not feeling that deprivation and they're plugging along. They're plugging along slower, but they're not falling off plan because they're giving themselves that little wiggle room. But again, it creates a much slower process to get to your goal weight. So I know there's going to be a lot of coaches that don't love this, but I'm teaching people what maintenance really looks like and that big pendulum doesn't help anybody, but if you can figure out how to allow yourself those little carbs paired with protein and the calories stay under 1200, you're still going to end up losing weight, but it will be at a lot slower rate. So I hope this was some interesting food for thought. As Sherry said, Sherry is totally right. Um, it's math. If you don't love math, you're not going to love what I'm talking about. And you might go, eek, I'm going to stick with the five and one. But if you're sticking with the five and one, this isn't a video for you. If you're yo-yoing in the five and one because you love fruit so much, you can't bear without it. Then are you willing to go without six pounds of the 10 to 12 you maybe would lose to pair it correctly and go at a slower rate? to have one fueling a day that's balanced out of the grocery store with your bread or your fruit. Maybe, but as you can see too, if you're deciding to throw a 
Twinkie in once a day and pair it with, I don't know, four cheese sticks. <laughs> I don't know. Horrible. But I'm saying if mathematically it fit in, you technically, if your caloric intake was at 1200 and with the Twinkie in there and it was balanced, you'd still lose weight doing a Twinkie and four cheese sticks as your number four fueling every day. So I don't know. I, I'm, I hope this was not too much information, but I'm just finding that for some of my clients that that pendulum is swinging at a very huge swing and they're not really gaining any traction. If this is what it takes for you to be able to continually plug along just at a slower rate, then that's what you do, people. It's about you and what works for you. And hopefully this transition and maintenance video that my coach did forever ago, that's not even a tool we use anymore. It'll, it'll be another tool in your tool belt of your health and wellness journey. And if nothing else, this is going to get your brain to start thinking about what maintenance looks like. Because when people say to me, will I ever get to drink a glass of wine again? Or will I ever get to have a piece of, what is it? Um, it's this mint chocolate chip, delightful thing at this restaurant here where I live, you can, but step one is figuring out the carbs and then you're going to figure out how much protein you have to pair with it. So that doesn't spike your blood sugar and store as fat. And it still might store a little as fat, but it's not going to be the same as if you ate this, this mint chocolate chip delight thing by itself at four in the afternoon because you're having a bad day and now you're off the rails for five days. You know what I'm saying? So, so again, I know this was a very long video. Thank you for you guys that are, that are watching live and, um, uh, you know, ask any questions below. Um, but just know that you are not going to go to your coach and say, Gwen told me I could have bread and fruit. I'm telling you, if you need that, you get to pair it with protein in a 1200 calorie or lower day and it's going to dramatically slow your weight loss down. But if we're shooting for the end game of being healthy, if you lose it in four months or six months, it's better than binging and not even losing half the weight. So thanks all of you for hopping on live. I've never done this before. And I loved having some of you guys ping in some questions as you go. Um, and, and hopefully this gave you just a little more food for thought. And thank you everybody for watching. Hope you have a great day and an awesome weekend. Bye guys.